Israel, uh, the Lord Jehovah has spoken with me, beloved people. Uh, the time now is about 4.10 a.m. in the morning, East African time. And the Lord Jehovah, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has spoken with me this night. And that is why I come to you this night, beloved people, through Jesus is Lord Radio, 105.3, 105.9 FM. And uh, the Lord, in that very, very shocking conversation, he has spoken with me this night about the coming of the Messiah. And the Lord is speaking at such a very tremendous hour when the nations are aware that surely the Messiah is coming. Now, in this night's conversation, the Lord took me to a meeting, and while I am at that meeting, he told me by voice, the Lord God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, he said he will come to that meeting, and he will speak to me audibly by voice aloud, and all the people that are there will also hear his voice. Again, this past night, the Lord has had a very, very unusual visitation with me here. The Lord, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, has visited me in a very, very mighty way. Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sid Kenu, Jehovah Sori. He has spoken with me this night about a meeting and a visitation that is coming in his continuous effort to prepare the church and prepare the nations for the glorious coming of the Messiah. You are all aware that the Lord sent me with a strict mission after instructing me by the throne, in front of the throne, the throne of God covered by the glory, the tremendous pure white glory. And he sent me with a strict instruction to prepare the way for the glorious coming of the Messiah and prepare the four ends of the earth, all the nations. And in this effort to prepare the way for the glorious coming of the Messiah, the Lord has brought forth the latter glory and the latter visitation, the latter anointing, to be a sign unto the nations in the church that surely, yes, the Messiah is coming. So this night, beloved people, the Lord has spoken with me in a very, very unusual way, very shocking manner, and a dreadful way. The Lord, he told me that I will be in a meeting. He will take me to a meeting, and I could see myself in that meeting. And then he said he would speak to me audibly aloud by voice, and the people all over there, around there, would be able to hear his voice. And it was a very shocking time because I saw it. And then the Lord said, and it will be good. He finished by saying, and it will be good. And you know, good for the Lord means holy. It will be a holy thing that will have happened to the earth or to the people that are there. Now the Bible, uh, in the book of John, in the book of John chapter 12, Reading from verse 28, he says, to 29, he says, Rather, I will say, I'm reading Amplified, Rather, I will say, Father, glorify, honor, extol your name. Again, Father, I will say, Father, glorify, honor, and extol your name. Then, a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Verse 29, John chapter 12, he says, The crowd of people who stood nearby and heard the voice of the Lord said that it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus has said, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. 
Now the judgment is upon this world. So, beloved people, the voice of the Lord, the hearing of the voice of the Lord, a tremendous moment in the history of the church. But the church can hear the voice of the Lord. Again, the Lord has spoken with me about a meeting I'm going to. And at that meeting, he said, he is going to speak to me aloud by voice. God the Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible in the book of Deuteronomy, verse chapter 4, verse 33, he says, Has any other people heard the voice of God speaking out of fire as you have and lived? He asked. In the New Living Translation, he says, Has any nation ever heard the voice of God speaking from fire as you did and survived? So this is going to be a tremendous time, beloved people, a very dreadful time also. But these are the signs of the days right before the Messiah comes. We know very clearly that Jesus, the Lord, is coming. The Lord Jesus is coming. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for us on the cross, he is now coming for the bride. And the latter glory has come, and we have seen that there is no limitation to the doings of the latter glory of the Lord God Almighty. Again, our Lord Jesus, who died on the cross and resurrected for the church, who redeemed the church at the Calvary Cross, is coming back. I know all of you are now aware that for sure, yes, Jesus is coming. But we are also seeing that the latter glory that prepares the way for his coming has no limitation. We are today, today, this morning, we are confronted with a big celebration service today in Nairobi here, 633 cripples that were raised when the Lord Jehovah, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, commanded me and instructed me to lift up my left prophetic hand and decree that the cripples rise up, command their weak legs to strengthen, that they may rise up, command them to rise up from the dust and walk in the mighty name of Jesus. And we see now that in that mighty name of Jesus, today we are confronted with 633 cripples that were raised from the dust. It is a shock. It is historic. It's astounding, it is stunning, it's a perplexity going on here. So we are seeing that there is no limitation to the doings of God, to this latter glory. And the same breath now, the Lord has escalated it, and he showed me this night, he showed me a meeting, he took me to and he spoke to me by voice, saying that he will take me to that meeting, and then he will speak to me aloud by voice. And I heard, I saw, I saw already that he spoke to me by voice, and he said, the people around there will also hear his voice. And then he concluded by saying, and it will be good. Now, this comes right on the heel of, uh, right uh, on the backdrop of a conversation when he said, the person of the Holy Spirit, the heaven would open and the glory would beam on me in one of the meetings, and the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit would descend like a dove, upon my head here, and people would see. They would be able to see and even capture, record. Now, this night, he says, you speak to me in a meeting, by voice, and people will hear. And at the end, at the end, I remember I asked him. I asked him whether people would be able to hear the people around, hear and record. And I remember, I think he said yes. So this is a tremendous time where there is no limitation. The God of heaven has now come to visit his people to prepare them for the glorious coming of Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the Redeemer. Our Lord Jesus is coming, beloved people. Let us prepare the way for the coming of Jesus. Jesus, the Messiah, is coming. This is such a time, a beautiful time to be born again Christian, because finally the Lord is separating out the Church of Christ from all other idol religions, idol worship. He's establishing that this is the true religion of the cross. This is the true religion. And he's separating the Christian faith from 
all other kinds of worship on the earth. 633 cripples are gathering this morning in Nairobi for a powerful Thanksgiving celebration service. And inside that service, there will also be, I will be seated, next to me will be seated a dead decomposing corpse that died and rotted became rotten and smelly and people ran away. The prophecy I gave more than two years ago. Who was resurrected by he that speaks with you now when the Lord God Almighty commanded me to speak it is well for a dead corpse, a decomposing corpse. She will also be sitting next to me today. As we celebrate the 633 cripples that the Lord God Almighty has raised, in this effort to prepare the way. He has raised them in the mighty name of Jesus to prepare the way for the glorious coming of Christ Jesus the Messiah. As we celebrate that monumental feat, it's a, it's, it's a monumental occurrence on the earth, historic. It is like today the earth will shake. They will shake at the hearing of this. That 633 cripples were raised from the dust. When the Lord confined me in my residence, did not remove me from here. That is a wonder. It is astounding and stunning. And next to me will be a dead decomposing corpse that died and was rotting together with the doctor that certified her death and the senior doctor that certified her resurrection. Until today, making notes and writing a book on the, resur- the process of resurrection. Tremendous moments, beloved people. And now the Lord says, in a meeting, he will come and speak to me by voice aloud. And all the people there will hear and they will be terrified. And I'm read from the scripture where he asks, who, are, who else, what other nation has heard the voice of the Lord as you, Israel, have heard and survived and lived? So these are dreadful days, beloved people. May the Lord help you. May your wisdom help you and not fail you on this one that you may prepare the way Christ Jesus is coming. The messenger, the slave, the slave that goes ahead of him with a spade to prepare his way is already here. This is the voice of he that prepares the way of the Lord. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, crying out to the church, crying out to the nations, saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. The Messiah is coming. Turn away from unrighteous deeds. Turn away from unholy acts, unholy acts. Turn away from wickedness. Turn away from evil, sin, and apostasy. And return to the house of the Lord. Receive ye Jesus Christ. Receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Be born again. And walk in righteousness. Embrace holiness. Live a holy Christian life. And meet the light of Christ. Because the days are over. The Messiah, Christ Jesus, our Lord, is coming, beloved people. This is a very shocking moment that he will come. He has spoken with me this night. And he took me to that meeting. And I saw myself there. Then heaven opened and he spoke aloud from heaven. It was tremendously terrifying. And all the people there heard. And people fell down on their bellies. And he said they would hear. And, I, and it was amazing because it was a two-way conversation with him. Then I asked him. I spoke with him and he answered back by voice this night. So the Messiah, Christ Jesus, is coming. And God the Father has sent you the slave, the messenger, the prophet that prepares the way for the glorious coming of the Messiah. His marks are clear, beloved people. He has commanded heaven to open in the public, in a broad sunny summer day, and heaven has obeyed and rain came down in an instant. He has called down God the Father, and God the Father has visited him in the cloud of glory, a prophecy he gave before the day. He has spoken these things and done all these works in the name of Jesus. So can the nations please never fail to enter? The Messiah is coming. The Messiah is coming. I plead with you. You can receive the Messiah and be holy. Christ Jesus, our Lord, is coming back. This is further to remind you, beloved people, 
in finishing now, I would like to remind you that I spoke earlier also that the Lord God Almighty, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, would come and transfigure me in the eyes of all people. And that took place last year, 2017, here. And I also gave a prophecy earlier that I would walk in a meeting and the glory of the Lord would swirl in front of me in waves like this. And that happened in Helsinki. And I also gave a prophecy that the Lord God Almighty would come and cover me with his glory all the way up to the neck, making part of the head be sin. And that happened, beloved people. That did happen. That is something that took place. Each one of those, however impossible they seem, for the Lord to come and transfigure somebody, however impossible it seemed, for the glory to cover someone and walk and swirl, the living glory swirl in front of him as he walked. It happened in Helsinki. However impossible it may seem, for the Lord to come and cover somebody with, with all his glory, transfigure him and cover him with the white, pure, holy glory of the Father, up to the neck, leaving just a portion of the head for people to be able to identify that, oh, that is him. But it happened. And now again, I have spoken that there is a meeting at which the Lord is taking me. And then he will come and speak with me aloud. And he said in that conversation, there's so much we spoke. I spoke back to him and he spoke. He answered me. He said he would do so because he wants the people to fear his servant. He wants them to fear his servant. And it was a terrifying moment. So however difficult they seem, they will happen, beloved people. And I have said that Christ Jesus, the Messiah, is coming. However far distant it may have seemed, it too will happen. It will happen, beloved people. So prepare the way. Everything has been given unto you. The Messiah, our Lord Jesus, is coming. The one who died for us on the cross is coming. These things have happened in your eyes. They have happened that you may believe. Thank you, Shalom.